episode, we're going to look at tracking changes within action text. So for our articles, we have a title, and then we have some content, which is an action text attribute. So if we edit this, if we make some changes, and we update the article, we'll come back, and of course, as we would expect, we now see the updated changes, but then we can track the previous versions of that action text. And so to implement this versioning system for action text, I do have a couple of conditions that I want to meet in order for this to be a realistic solution. One of those is to be able to track who made the change. Another condition is to be able to see what the previous content was. And the third condition is that I want it to be very unobtrusive in my Rails application. So I didn't want to have to go through a bunch of different hoops depending on how I'm using action text. And one pretty cool use case for this is something that I've actually implemented within Rubidium and it seems to work quite nicely. So under our templates, I'll look up one that I know I have some changes on. We can see that we have a count of two different changes. And if we open up one of the changes, you can see what has been added, what's been removed, and the previous version at this commit. So we're not going to go into creating this diff view. That's something that you would be able to use with what we're covering within this episode. And the library I used to generate that was called diff2html but it really is as simple as getting the diff of the previous commit in our versions record and the current existing one, and then passing that over to diff to HTML, which I used as a stimulus controller to then display the nice diff of changes. So to get started, we'll run rails action text colon install in our terminal, and then we'll also generate a scaffold for our articles, and I'll just have a title there, and then our content is actually going to be action text, so I'm not going to create that attribute within the articles model. And for our sample application, we are going to be using device. So I have a very basic device setup, and there really isn't much going on there. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and generate a model for our versions. And for the attributes of our version, we need to be able to first track who this version belongs to. We then need to track the model and the record that was changed. And to do that, I'll call this attribute an item. And then it's going to be a references. And in in mustaches, if we call polymorphic, then we can make this a polymorphic association that we can then tie back to our item. And for the content that we'll store of what it used to be, we're actually going to use action text again. So that way we don't have to worry about how the text is getting stored it's going to work just like it would with action text. So once that's done, I'll go ahead and run Rails DB migrate to migrate our database. In the articles model, we can create the has rich text for our content, and then we can also create the association to our versions. So this is gonna be a has many versions. And to make the tie to the polymorphic association, we'll do a as item, and then we can make this a dependent, destroy. So if this article is ever deleted, then it's also going to delete the historical versions as well. And then in the version model, we could do something very similar with a has rich text. And this is again going to be, let's just call it our content. So the name of this action text doesn't really matter. It's just what we're going to then reference when we are displaying the historical versions. It does not have to match the action text attribute on our models. And then under the config initializers folder, I'll create an action underscore text underscore version dot RB file. And within here, we can run the active support dot on underscore load. We can pass in the action text rich text and then create a block. Within here, we'll have a action text rich text and we'll do a class eval on this. And so to trigger that a change needs to be stored, we're going to use a callback and let's just do a before save on here. And I'm just gonna call this record change and it will be a private method. And within here, we want to add a couple of guard clauses. So we want to return unless the body was changed. And this body is going to refer to the actual action text, rich text. 
And then we also want to add a guard clause because whenever we are creating a historical version, we're going to be storing that within action text as well. So we wouldn't want to record that a version has a new version. We would only in this particular case would want to record that an article's content has a new version. So we could do a return if the name is equal to content and if the record type is equal to version. And more specifically, it's going to be this record type equal to version that we are wanting to look out for. Because if we don't have this, then we could end up with a stack overflow with a version, creating a new version, creating a new version, and so on. And then we can simply create our version. For our item, we'll simply pass in the record. The content will reference to the body, but we don't want the current body. We want what the body was, and then we need to track the user. And this is where things get a little bit complicated. And I really don't like having to introduce a current user within a model, but there really wasn't a good way around it, or at least not one that would keep things pretty unobtrusive. So I'm going to create a model and I'm just going to call it the current scope. And with that, we'll pass in a user. So we could create a current scope file in our initialize folder, but I'm just going to add it up here because it's going to be very small. So I have a module for a current scope and then we'll have a module at our accessor for our user. So that way we could call something like current scope dot user. And then in the application controller file, we can have an around action and we can set our user for a version. This will be a private method and we can set the current scope dot user is equal to our current user, which is a helper method that we're getting from device. And another helper method that we get from device is if the user is signed in. And then we would need to call yield on here to continue on with the request. And while we're in the area of controllers, I'll come into the articles controller and to finish setting up the action text for the articles, we simply just have to allow the content and the article params. In our form for the articles, we can copy this down and we'll just change it to a rich text area and then also take in the content. And just to test this out to make sure it's working correctly, in the show view, I'm just going to take our article, I'm going to call the versions on here and just get the size of the versions. And then we can also create a table and I'm just going to paste the basic frame here. And then we can take our article dot versions and let's order them by the ID descending. And typically you would want to do this probably on a separate page than the show action. And you would want to also do this within the controller. But just as an example, we're just going to loop through each one of these just so we can get the content. And so we'll have a row with three columns. And in the first column, we'll just get our version.id. I'll paste this down here just to make it a little bit easier. For the second column, let's display out the content. And that's going to be the action text content on our version, which should be the previous history version of our article's content. And lastly, we can get our user. Let's just get the user and display the email address. And finally, at the top here above the versions, let's just display out the article's content. So that way we're going to be able to see what the latest change is and what the previous changes were. So coming to a new article, we can paste some content within our article and it did create one version, which we would expect because we are using a before save callback. You can tweak that to a before update or something similar, depending on how you want to track the changes. And if we come in and make a change, adding some more content and update the article, we now see we have two versions. We see the previous version and the initial version where the user had created the article. And if we add a bunch of changes, that's going to work just as well. Coming back, if we change the title of our article, but we don't actually touch the content and update it, you see that we don't get an additional version change. And that's thanks to the guard clause that we had preventing a version from creating. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.